today we are going to start a new course called artificial lift artificial lift is being used for oil industry for several years and there are several types of artificial lift which is being used uh, to lift fluid from the well bore to the surface and the techniques uh, such as saccharide pump electric submersible pump jet pump or gas lift system they are all cannot be used for all the well bore so this lecture will cover the techniques different techniques used for different well bore so well bore will have the properties like uh, it will have low pressure high pressure it will have low sand high sand it will have low gas high gas temperature different well bore deviated so if we consider all the part then one artificial lift cannot be used for everywhere so you have to know the well bore property on side and on side you have to know the me mechanical properties or the pumping capability of a machine so you have to link both together so when you are linking both together so you have to understand the physics and mathematics then you can link so the course will contain basically this uh, introduction to oil and gas because this is first course so uh, i am introducing the basic part introduction introduction to oil and gas next i will be uh, considering uh, some topic such as multi phase flow multi phase flow then i'll consider some other topics such as uh, properties of oil, uh, oil and gas properties of oil and gas then reservoir properties because without knowing reservoir properties actually you cannot use any artificial lift so you, you should you should know the properties of fluid properties of reservoir then after that you have to i'll introduce artificial lift and where to use what type of artificial lift so selection method selection method of artificial lift then after introducing selection criteria i'll differentiate or i will discuss the different artificial lift one by one for example first one i will be saccharot pump or beam pump uh, whenever students are searching the saccharot pump you should search the different terms such as beam pump in google if if you search beam pump saccharot pump or uh, uh, or there are some other terms such as nodding donkey or horse head so several terms are there so all the terms you have to use uh, to search if you want to get more information about saccharot pump or beam pump the next come uh, next uh, most commonly used system is that gas lift system so gas lift actually in well bore when reservoir pressure is lower so inject gas and you create multi phase flow that multi phase flow will be delivering well bore fluid to the surface so that is one technique and you need one gas surface compression system so that surface compression system will be increasing pressure of gas whatever injecting gas you cannot use uh, air because air will have oxygen oxygen you cannot mix in well bore fluid so that will be creating a combustible mixture so instead of uh, oxygen free gas nitrogen you can inject or you can inject the produced gas whatever gas you are getting from well bore the same gas you can inject into well bore so that will be enhancing your productivity next can be progressive cavity pump progressive cavity pump or pcp which is actually for high viscosity fluid pumping so there are, there is one theory they say like progressive uh, cavity pump is a progressive thinking pump when no pump is working you can use a progressive cavity pump to lift fluid from well bore and the fluid viscosity can go this is 1 cp to 1000 cp like a grease toothpaste or any food processing industry they can also use this progressive cavity pump or uh, this is a one positive displacement pump energy performance or energy efficiency is lower but it can handle very high viscosity fluid that is the beauty of the pump next thing is the jet pump or hydraulic jet pump hydraulic uh, jet pump So hydraulic jet pump, uh, I think uh, the mechanical chemical engineer may, they must be familiar with the jet pump or uh, jet ejector, where you create a narrow channel where the flow velocity will increase. Flow velocity when in, it increasing, so that time your pressure will go down. So at low pressure it can suck other fluid. So that technology is used for well bore pumping, and there are two type of uh, hydraulic uh, pump. 
one is hydraulic jet pump another hydraulic engine pump i'll discuss both in the lecture uh, the, the the lectures will contain theoretical basics plus some mathematical calculations and at the end again i will revisit and i'll try to explain uh, well the betterment or which is the better for your specific application and i'll bring some model for designing and uh, i'll show and i'll explain things i'll go to next so uh, whenever you are talking about petroleum uh, petroleum so petroleum actually the term is coming petrus and oleum so petroleum is rock oleum is oil so this is actually rock oil uh, so whenever any deposits are there such as uh, planktons phytoplanktons or any animals get deposited uh, in the river bed or sea bed so with time and temperature and pressure it creates it it changes its uh, chemical properties and finally it gets converted into uh, the petroleum petroleum or uh, whatever diesel uh, petrol you are using petrol uh, uh, this course is related to petroleum so first you, you have to know the definition of petroleum petroleum is petra and oleum two terms are there so uh, petroleum you are getting from well bore well bore uh, how how you get well bore you have one reservoir and from reservoir you are get uh, after drilling a hole you are getting oil and gas but the term is used so easily but actually the industry needs to understand lots of physics and mathematics geology geophysics reservoir engineering and they need to understand mechanical engineering chemical engineering after that actually you are getting your petrol or diesel in your bike or your car so when you are considering petrol you go to petrol station you buy petrol but from where this petrol is coming petrol is coming from some refinery and refinery where from whether refinery getting directly oil and gas from well bore no they get oil and gas from well bore uh, but it must be purified before come to refineries so what happens in actual practice actual practice there will be one exploration phase so initially you you assume that there will be one oil and gas then you explore it that area you calculate how much oil and gas will be there then after that you drill a hole after drilling uh, you cannot get oil and gas uh, suddenly or directly because oil and gas is combustible product or it will be uh, hazardous to environment so if you do not treat or do not handle that produced fluid oil or gas so that will create a disaster environmental disaster or fire or some other uh, sort of uh, problem will come so then in that case you have to complete the well bore uh, just you have to uh, complete so i'll explain later uh, what is completion what is drilling then once you completed properly you uh, put a uh, um, casing or one pipe then cement it properly then put a hole so that mm, that whole method or whole process are called completion then after that uh, you go for separation uh, production phase during production phase actually you are taking up oil uh, oil and gas and mixture of sand and uh, sand and water and you are taking it to surface once you get on the surface then there will be one separator system so separator system what does it do it will be separating oil water gas sand so here you have to see which is your required product required product is gas and oil and not required product water and sand but water and sand again you cannot dispose anywhere randomly because it will be environmental hazardous so there will be certain procedure to treat or to remove the oil particle from the water or sand then you can use for your specific purpose or uh, you can inject into well bore or you can dispose somewhere else but when you are getting gas gas can have h2s h2s or other uh, chemical maybe so or maybe trace of water so in that case gas you have to separate those uh, un unwanted chemicals then you can send to your customer in den you know that it is coming to your home 
from Indian oil and oil. So, whatever oil you are get, getting that is actually crude oil. Crude oil means it will have thick, the, it is thick fluid, yellowish color and you cannot put in your bike or uh, your car or truck or train. So, you have to change that property and you have to make thin fluid, very thin like petrol, a little bit thick, diesel, some more thick maybe your lubricating oil, some more thick wax. So, that way you have to separate then you have to use. So, once you get oil again you have to separate that one properly, you have to remove all the water particle, all the sand, sediment, everything you have to remove then you are transporting it, uh, transporting it to customer. Then when uh, it uh, not customer sorry, it you are transporting to a refinery. Okay. So, once you go to refinery then what happens? So, now Now, if I uh, consider like exploration, uh, like uh, exploration to drilling to completion to production to uh, trans, uh, uh, separation, then separation to it will go to your uh, refineries. then refineries to your customer okay but ecos is little artificial lift the, where is the artificial lift artificial lift is here okay so when you drill a hole the hole is ready for production but if you do not complete it properly it can create a disaster you cannot get proper uh, eco economical production rate so, what you do initially, initially you complete, when you are complete actually you are putting one cement, uh, so I will I'll draw one uh, well bore actually, you drill a hole, then we put one pipe, uh, that pipe uh, will have must be cemented, okay. So, this is a well bore this is pipe in oil industry they use the term called casing okay and when you put this pipe or casing you have to put cement this is called cement this term is called cementing okay now well bore is ready for production but still there are some issues you put casing and cementing then well bore this is reservoir say so, assume this is reservoir oil is there oil plus gas plus um, water plus sand everything is there but already you put casing so that means well uh, well bore fluid cannot enter into your well bore so what you do you put lots of perforations here lots of small small holes here okay lots of small small hole what will happen well will come uh, the the oil and gas will come and it will enter through these perforations okay so it will enter through perforation it will move up and on the surface you have some mechanism separator separator so using the, that separator you separate and you send to your uh, refineries and customers now what happens if reservoir pressure is very low. So, in that case fluid or uh, well bore fluid oil gas sand this will not go to the surface or to separator. So, in that case you need artificial mechanism okay. If there is a sufficient reservoir pressure, if there is sufficient reservoir pressure then fluid will be automatically lifted up to the surface. So, that is called natural flow. So, that is called natural flow. natural flow when reservoir pressure is sufficient when reservoir pressure is sufficient this is called uh, natural flow if reservoir pressure is not sufficient to lift the fluid from uh, well bore to the surface that then you need artificial mechanism Okay. So, there may be artificial lift or there may be some other techniques such as steam injection or some water injection there will be some mechanism. So, I will focusing only on artificial lift. 
okay so artificial heat mechanism is to when the pressure is very low there is no flow no natural flow so you need this one uh, sometime you need artificial heat to increase productivity for example you are going to 500 barrel per day you want to increase to 700 barrel so in that case you create certain mechanism or put some artificial heat so that your productivity can increase up to 700 or whatever desired So historically, history of oil and gas, history of oil and gas, if you see, uh, it is actually 5000 or more years ago, people were used to uh, get oil and gas and they were used to um, used for energy purpose. And gradually that first well bore came in 1869 in US. Uh, then in India, if you see a uh, first well bore was created in Assam. And in Assam also, when uh, first oil was found, that is, there is a very good story. The story is like this, the Assam Railway Company, uh, there was one Canadian engineer, Englishman, he was uh, uh, leading one team of labors and they were trying to put railway tracks and they were using elephants to carry their wood, woods and they were be putting in certain place and that was doing and when elephants were moving from one place to another place they found one black color some fluid oil most probably the smell was oily uh, it was uh, soaking their uh, elephants leg so then labor said sir there is oil but the, the british the, the, the canadian engineer he said like boy dig boy dig dig boy like B O Y. So dig boy dig. So that is why the term came dig boy. How much do I do not know, but uh, there is lots of uh, information or lots of uh, stories are there in the internet. So you also can search. Okay. So uh, the, and then uh, the uh, British government they started first well bore so well number one i think they created in the digba area so still i think that area the government india government has created one museum to show the first indian uh, well, well bore and then uh, india got oil in mumbai high so in the mumbai high is giving very high amount of oil for indian uh, uh, requirement for example 14 percent about uh, energy uh, that oil is produced from mumbai high only then other areas like Gujarat area is there, Rajasthan area is there, Tamil Nadu area is there, many places uh, uh, oil and gas was found. And India, uh, although there are so lots of well bore and lots of activities going on, still India is not sufficient to produce oil. India is importing 80 percent, more than 80 percent oil and gas from outside. So, we are giving huge amount of money to the other countries and we are buying. Although there is uh, increase in dependency on renewable energy, but still there is prediction that the oil and gas requirement or dependency on oil and gas will be continuing for next 50, 60 or 100 years. Because although dependency will be reduced, because uh, when you are in, using renewable energy, so many places you are replacing a uh, renewable energy system with uh, um, the oil based system with renewable energy. But there are some uh, other places, for example, uh, plastics you are using, you are using medicines, you are using bags. So, many items also other than oil and gas, uh, the petrol and diesel or uh, uh, that fuel for burning or running your vehicles, there are lots of other requirements. So, because of this, all the requirements, oil and gas production will be continuing, maybe dependence will be reducing. And another term came up peak oil. Peak oil means many people are saying like peak oil we have produced, so now it is declining gradually, but there is still exploration going on, still uh, people are exploring and getting more well bore. So, because of this, uh, there is production also getting up and still there are chance that maybe deep water somewhere or maybe if you drill Himalaya, maybe you will get more oil. So, there is still chance that we will get more reservoir, but for India, it may not be sufficient to produce oil and gas, whatever we need. And there are few countries who are producing very high amount of oil and gas, for example, Russia, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, they are producing very high amount of it, um, highest amount of uh, oil and gas. But more consumption we find in US the highest consumption and their consumption in China, India I think third or fourth. So, there are huge consumption in India also, but we are not producing. So, there is huge gap. So, uh, India government uh, is trying to handle all these situations. Okay, so um, oil and gas composition wise, so 
the major component is carbon. So, carbon will be around 83 to 85 percent, 83 to 85 percent, while hydrogen will have maybe uh, 10 to 14 percent, 14 percent, nitrogen will be 0.1 percent, about 0.1 percent, uh, oxygen will be 0 0.05, uh, 0.05 to uh, 1 percent, 1.5 percent, sulfur will be, traces sulfur will be there, 0 0.05, yes, oxygen, N, and sulfur will be 0 0.05 to uh, 6 percent. Okay. Now, we do not have any metal content such as uh, sodium or potassium, uh, but these are main constituent. And uh, sulfur, uh, if you see here energy, carbon and hydrogen, this hydrocarbon, uh, this is called hydrocarbon, that is why hydrogen carbon is there, hydrocarbon, this is giving actually main energy. And if we have sulfur, sulfur is the enemy of oil and gas industry. So, if you have a good amount of sulfur, so that will create lots of corrosion, sulfur plus oxygen, it will create SO2. SO2 plus H2O, it will create H2SO3 or H2SO4 so with some oxygen. So, H2SO4 plus H2SO4 uh, plus iron, for example, if you have iron metal pipes, so in that case it will create FeSO4 plus uh, H2. Okay. So, when you are getting this surface, ferrous surface of ferric sulphate, so what happens? Ferrous surface of ferric sulphate is salt, a softer material. So, softer material if you have, then corrosion and erosion rate will be very high. So, if you have H2, if you have sulfur, then sulfur will be more, uh, very much dangerous for your oil and gas industry. So, you have to handle that one properly. Uh, so, many times they will be handling on the surface treating systems, then they will be sending to the customer. And when you are sending to customer, there will be customer need. For example, they will be specifying BSW, basic sedimentation and water content in the uh, oil or gas. So, based on that, they will be certifying the quality. If you have more than certain amount of uh, BSW, solid or water content in your uh, petroleum supplying to your uh, refineries, they may not buy or they may say, okay, this is low graded, uh, not separated properly. So, that quality also you have to maintain when you are separating the oil and gas. Reservoir. So, I was talking about reservoir because I use the term reservoir many times. Reservoir means oil and gas when what uh, how reservoir is getting created. Reservoir is getting created like this when you have lots of organism or animals uh, deposited in the seabed and one layer by layer the sand will be deposited. So, when layer by layer the sand is de getting deposited, so after certain time with temperature and pressure, this will be getting converted into bitumen. So, one term is called bitumen, bitumen chemical, thick chemical. So, that bitumen again there will be one diagenesis, another uh, set of reactions. So, that will create hydrocarbon. So, that when uh, it is creating uh, hydrocarbon, so that uh, that will be releasing loss of water and other oxygen, other compound and it will be forming only hydrogen and carbon uh, based compound. So, more hydrogen and more carbon will be there and other compound will be reduced. So, th th that's why uh, that is why you are creating oil and gas. And in reservoir, in a reservoir you have oil and gas. So, to get reservoir what you need? You need one source rock, source rock where oil and gas is created, another permeable rock. Permeable rock means source rock is there and if there is no connectivity between let us say one pocket is oil here, one pocket oil here, one, if there is no connectivity you cannot get product, production. So, you need one permeable rock. So, permeable rock means you connect, you are connecting the small, small pockets to uh, extract energy, extract oil and gas. Okay. Now, uh, if you have permeable and this rock, again it will not give you uh, oil and gas because if there is a, uh, there is no uh, coverage on the top of this uh, oil and gas area and you are giving very high pressure, what will happen? The gas will escape and liquid also will escape. So, in that case, you want cap rock or solid metal, uh, solid rock where oil and gas will be deposited, but it will be covering that area. So, actually what happens like this? I will draw one arc crust. Okay. So, uh, there may be gas and then uh, gas, then maybe there will be one liquid layer. This may be liquid oil, this is gas. Then again, there may, may be other gas cap. 
and there will be solid rock or cap rock ok and this will be permeable and this will be another uh, cap I will put some other color actually this one cap so when cap is there so gas cannot escape if you see this gas this gas cannot escape so this is getting reserved here and now you put one hole here this is your drilled hole you get gas or you get hole here you get oil so whenever you have oil and gas in any reservoir so first you try to take oil out why oil out because oil uh, if you are taking gas out then pressure will go down and your oil producing that oil will be very difficult so first you drill a hole to get the oil out so gas anyway it will be expanding and it will be giving you the production so petroleum formation so when it is forming petroleum there will be three steps actually diagenesis catagenesis and uh, metagenesis oh, so, cat, uh, so when uh, diagenesis is happening normally it will be temperature 50 degrees centigrade and next is uh, 60 to 200 degrees centigrade catagenesis then more than 200 degrees centigrade so when uh, diagenesis is happening so normally you are getting bitumen then catagenesis is happening you are getting uh, uh, petrol or diesel is uh, the petrol diesel sort of fluid uh, actual your petroleum and when metagenesis is happening actually you are getting like graphite or maybe uh, diamond also and why petroleum is getting created because I already told that phytoplankton or animals they are getting deposited in the uh, seabed and that is getting transferred because of temperature and pressure so catagenesis digestion one picture is there it is like this cat this is catagenesis diagenesis so first you take all this living organism lignite lignin lignin then you take carbohydrates then you take uh, proteins then lipids then all together it will go to a uh, fluvic acid Okay, then fluid acid after that this is producing kerogen. So, from kerogen, thermal degradation will happening here. Thermal thermal degradation from thermal degradation, you are uh, actually this term is called cracking. So, this uh, cracking will be then further if you go down then it will be producing carbon residue or graphite okay so if you see the depth increasing temperature increasing and with time time also increasing others uh, because deposition uh, will be going down and down and down and down because lots of sedimentation uh, will be happening over it over it over it so that that way uh, it will be further below and uh, at the end you are getting graphite or maybe diamond also okay uh, the kerosene is actually producing bitumen and uh, there will be a uh, hydrocarbon heavy hydrocarbon heavy hydrocarbon hc i am writing this is hydrocarbon uh, or crude oil crude oil you are getting here actually and here we are getting graphite already told ok natural gas so i talked about oil so now talk about natural gas 
natural gas uh, when you are getting from well bore so it is it may contain many uh, constituents such as sulfur oxygen traces of nitrogen other so basically it will have sulfur and oxygen sulfur and water traces so in contact a column uh, will be separating and you will get pure or dry uh, sweet uh, natural gas and it can use for your cooking or any other purpose gas turbine running or some other purposes purposes so natural gas will have constituents such as uh, ch4 major component is methane methane will be 70 to 90 percent some other component will be the like C2H4, C3H8, uh, C2H6. Uh, so, this sort of uh, methane, ethane, propane, this sort of uh, compound also will be there, but their percentage will be going down gradually. But because methane CH4 is lightweight uh, molecule, so it will be more volatile, so it will be forming natural gas. But if you go longer chain hydrocarbon, it will form gradually liquid. Uh, liquid. So, if you see reaction in CH4, it is like this CH4 plus 2O2, it will create CO2 plus 2H2O plus energy. Okay. So, whenever you are burning in CH4, you will get sufficient amount of energy. Normally, it will be odorless and colorless, but for commercial purpose, for your safety purpose, normally they will be adding some chemicals such as mercetant, favorable. Uh, petroleum accumulation so high organic content is required high content uh, co organic content in source rock source rock means where uh, organic component uh, organic content were deposited and it got con uh, converted into petroleum next is rapid burial rapid burial and reducing environment enough outboard and pressure in uh, enough pressure, this is called uh, enough outboard and pressure that help in natural uh, maturation process or where chemical changes will be occurring. Then movement of easiness of source rock that is a porous rock should be required. Was required then pressure accumulation traps. So, pressure in trap, trap or cap rock, cap rock must be there. So, pressure must be higher. So, it will be converting into that. So, these are the basic uh, so pressure and cap rock. So, these are basic criteria to get, uh, to get a petroleum accumulated uh, oil and or oil and gas accumulated in the reservoir. So, from the reservoir we have to uh, lift uh, fluid to the surface. So, gradually we will go to the next lecture. Thank you very much.